Hello and welcome back. As you can see we've still got the Spitfire running around the railway. I thought we'd have a, a bit more of a run with it. And we are going to have a look at the Freightmaster set I picked up uh, towards the end of last year from David Angel. But uh, we've just got a, a few things running here. We've got the E2 with those other southern coaches from the late 70s. And I thought well, that would be quite nice just to have a bit of a run round. So I've just been uh, playing with these for an hour or so. I thought we'd just shoot a little bit of footage of them on the move. So we've got the United Dairies tank wagon on the end there. They are very dark in colour these aren't they? I like and hear the, the Spitfire in the distance behind the station. Let's see if we can catch up with that as it comes down the side of the station. Terrific looking model. Not as much pulling power as the older models as we, we saw in the video last week. So we'll just follow this round once more and then I think we'll, uh, we'll have a, a glance over the, uh, the Freightmaster set. I haven't done anything to it since I got it so I'm, we'll have a look at the box and I'll, I'll clean the things up a little. And then we'll, uh, we'll get it out on the railway and see how she does. Now it's one of the earlier models without the extra pickup so we can probably look forward to a little bit of stalling here and there and some relatively uneven running. Right, let's see if we can get the, uh, the Spitfire back into the station. So I'm going to take control of the Spitfire. So we'll, we'll grab hold of the controller. So Spitfire's model R374. I think it was available from uh, 81 to 85. So let's open point 8R. This could all go horribly wrong now. That should lead back into platform 2 at the station. Let's see if that uh, does exactly what we think it's going to do. So, charging around there and then the points we're going to go just branch off to the right after the Gerda bridge. And then hopefully point one Y is left in the correct direction. Yep, yeah, so we're not going to go into the long sidings and run into the back of anything. Got lots of things stacked up in there at the moment. Not too bad at that speed on the on the diamond crossing. And this should roll into the platform alongside the other. Great looking Winston Churchill. I should have said the, the other Battle of Britain class really, but I always refer to it as a Winston Churchill. So under the canopy, let's just have a look at those going under there. And over the top we'll catch up with her. And we'll bring it to a stop just after the footbridge I think. There we go. So that just leaves the, uh, the E2 to deal with. So I'm just going to seal this into the, uh, into the platform. So we'll close 8R. Actually no, we'll leave 8R open. We're going to need that. So we need to isolate this. Sorry, I'm not pointing at anything. And let's uh, bring this gently to a stop just before the points. There we go. So now what I'm going to do is open up number 40 and 10. So I'm not pointing right there, and then we'll back her back into the uh, the station there. But I've just got to fiddle with a little bit of point work and switch around the controller. So we want to turn that one off, make it all run on the one controller. And then we want 4-0 and then 1-0. So if I've done everything correctly, leaving points 8-R will leave the here. Uh, potentially open at the other end of the long, the, uh, the long sidings. So 
sorry, excuse me, I'm just talking to myself. So that, that should just run through there now. There we go. So the way it's wired up really, I need 8R, which is what I was wittering about before, which is at the far end of this one. If we follow that around there, sorry I'm moving too quickly. So if I close that one, I, I won't be able to back the train back into the platform I want to go to. So now let's just close. Number four zero row and I have to admit I've forgotten which one I was going to move next so I'm going to have another glance at it yeah one and two so we're going to move it back into there so let's do that so one and then two so that'll go into that sort of little platform bay on the far side of the Winston Churchill over there so hopefully if I've done everything right we should get a little movement now so let's see what we what we're up to slight hesitation on the point there and I think we're good there so here's the Winston Churchill sitting in there and now we've, we've got that little train with the E2 there, just sitting there in that sort of bay, I think you call it, is it a platform bay? We'll, we'll call it a platform bay. So I'm sure there's probably a technical, te technical name for that. So we'll leave those there and we'll, we'll come back to the railway in a moment, but let's just have a, a look at this box. I know I showed this in an earlier video last year. So this is a late version of the Freightmaster set. So it's an R651, so it became 651 in 1970, I think. Prior to that, it was a RS51 coming along in 1964. So the six denotes the change to system six track. Let's have a quick glance. Is there some information on the outside of this box? Let's try not to ruin the track work at the same time. So there's a little bit of tearing where the sellotape's been put onto uh, repair the box containing electric diesel locomotive horse box bit torn off four goods wagons guards van over of track bit torn off and an uncoupling power controller required not reading that correctly perhaps let's have a, have a look inside the box I think as you can see there's plenty of damage and it's been rather stylishly repaired in the past with what looks like uh, green tape I don't know whether that's electrical tape or sort of wrapping tape or, or something but you can see it's a, somebody who's been fairly enthusiastic with tape in the past there so with one hand I'm just going to pull that away actually let's just have a, a quick look at this, this box again because I think they made these boxes and then put the stickers on the top of them and I think this is the same size box that my turntable came in and I think you can just see behind the picture on the turntable box some writing of another set that was that was a uh, the box has been repurposed at some point in the past so let's put this in a place of safety for now so I'm going to put that down there because we're not going to run anything for the next few moments so I have got to clean these things up a little bit so I know that there is life in the motor but it's not not very smooth at the moment so here we can see we've got this great set of wagons there it's quite a big set isn't it so uh, I see seven wagons. I think some of the wagons changed over the years. I think it was one of the, one of the container wagons with the the trying prams or pedig pedigree prams. Is it? I'll, I'll have to look that up later. Uh, perhaps instead of the cable drums at, at some point. So we do have the uh, the system six track in here. So I won't lift it all out. Let's just lift a bit out and a little bit out and have a look. So let's get that against the grey so you, you can see the, uh, the lovely track there. It's quite soft where the sleepers go into the, into the bed on, underneath the, uh, the rail, isn't it? So it's not a hard edge, 
has quite a soft effect about it. Let's have a quick glance on the other side there. Made in England. And you see how, sorry for shaking that around too much. See how the fish plate seems to be attached to the, the track bed there. So I haven't tried to slide the rail out, but I don't think it's, it's like Super 4, I don't think it was designed to be able to pull the rail out of the, the track bed. Um, Super 4, it will, will slide out quite successfully. I'll just look at those uh, rail joiners there, or, or fish plates. So uh, let's just have a look at one more piece. So it's not in terribly good condition. You see this one really has deteriorated. Let's have a look at this. So the, any plating on this, I think, on the, on the rail heads is probably long gone. So that's uh, well away. And it's probably still clean up and used fairly successfully. I don't think there's much... Uh, plating left on, on any of my track. Um, it is all, uh, I mean it's well used when it came to me, none, none of this was uh, in sort of a new old stock condition when I began to use it. So let's have a look at some of the items. So actually what we'll do is we'll have a quick look at a, a catalogue or two catalogues. I had it in mind we should probably have a, a swift look at the 64 catalogue which is the year that the Freightmaster set showed up. So let's have a quick glance at that. So we won't go through the entire book. So somebody has scribbled on here, early 1964. Now there is a price list I have discovered in here, but it's not, it doesn't have the railway items in it. It just has the, uh, the motorway items. So it's, um, it, it just has these items listed and it's also the 63 price list. So there's another bit of stamping there. So I suspect it's crept into this catalogue at some point by accident. Um, I don't remember it myself, so it, it's probably before it came to me. So we'll have a quick look at these uh, rather wonderful items. That's an amazing, amazing looking thing, isn't it? So we will have a quick look at some of the items in the, in the motorway section at the back that caught my eye a little earlier on while we're looking at this. So I hadn't really noticed them before. That's a wonderful, is that the, the High Women set there? Yeah, RS36. So there are some prices written on these things. So is that 135, is that shillings? I'm, I'm not good with the, the old money. So uh, the Blue Pullman set at 97 and 6. These figures are rather lovely as well. Let's have a look at those. These sets of figures. Question marks after them. Very nice things. There we go. This is what we've come to look for. So the Freightmaster set. I think this is the first year it showed up in the catalogue. It's um, the Freightmaster train consists of R357. So you've got the diesel locomotive with magnetization. That was a new model the year before in 63, I think. A horse box, that's R123. Cattle wagon, R122. Milk tank, R15. Um, Try and container wagon, which isn't in this new set I've got, which is R340, I think. And then the three container wagon, which is present in this set. Um, am I reading these numbers the wrong way around now? I think the Try and container wagon was r 561 and the three container wagon was R340 and then we've got the drop side with sided wagon sorry and that, that would be um, R113 so I'm looking over the top of the phone and trying to focus from one place to the other and then we've got the brake van R16 and then we've got uh, four straights and then eight curves power connecting clip and an uncoupling ramp so I think um, more or less that's what we've got in here. Although I think we've got, we have a cable drum wagon instead of the try and container wagon. So we just have a look there. Uh, let's jump into the uh, the 72 catalogue. So I, I think um, my set is from 72. So it was the changeover year to Hornby Railways. So uh, we do have a price list which is relevant as well. So here is the, the set just about as mine looks. So we'll have a look at that, although my horse box, sorry, um, 
cattle wagon is much darker than that one. Let's see if we can uh, get everything in view in the one go here. We've seen the track. Yeah, so my uh, cattle wagon, sorry, cattle wagon, I'm pointing the wrong one, is a sort of a darker brown one. And uh, it looks more like a, a reddy brown one in the picture, but uh, you never know whether these are the original items. So these, these boxes have been around for a long, long time. So here we go, we've got the uh, RS651, so that accounts for the uh, the uh, System 6 track coming in in 1970. And then we've got that list of items. We've got the diesel locomotive and seven trucks, horse box, cattle wagon, milk tanker, cable drum, three container wagon, drop sided wagon, brake van, large oval of System 6. So, uh, so quite an interesting uh, set of items lots to play with so we'll pop that to one side we'll have a quick, quick glance and see what sort of price that was so this is the, the 72 price list so BT's of London and I think the sets are on the back where are we here we go we've got the sets let's try and move a little slower so we're looking for RS651 there we go £8.75 so uh, this is what £8.75 would have bought you in 1972. It doesn't sound like very much today, but I imagine £8.75 was definitely quite a, a reassuring sum of money back then. So there we've got the, the uncoupling ramp just sitting in there, and there's sort of a slightly yellowy-orange marker post present. Now, I don't think I can get my fingers in and get that. Maybe I can, maybe I can't. Again, I know I keep saying this on videos, excuse the emergency vehicle in the background, but I can hear one. Sometimes they pick up on the video and sometimes they don't. So there we go. There's a the uncoupling ramp. It's, uh, looks like it's seen a bit of action. It's got all its bits on, on the sides. So we'll pop that down. And the, uh, let's just have a quick look over at a couple of the wagons. I think I did mention when I, when I got this, there is glue present on, on some of these. So what I'm going to do is I, I'm not going to sort of restore them or any, anything. I'm just going to clean them up a little bit. Some of the wheels are a little bit dirty. There's a little bit of rust present. That wheel looks a bit uh, wobbly, doesn't it? So we might need a, a replacement in there before it'll run. So I'll get all these sort of cleaned up a little. Perhaps we'll have a look inside the locomotive when I've got it on the bench. And then we'll get the whole lot on the railway and we'll, we'll give it a bit of a run. See, that's a, seen better days, that, hasn't it? So, uh, they are quite nice things. Yeah, this, this has been glued, I think. Can we pinch this one out? And I think the cattle wagon, the top's been glued back onto the base quite clumsily. So, yeah, there's plenty, plenty of glue in there. I think they're, they're quite weak, these sides. If there's too much action on them, they, they break away. But uh, still, they're just such quite nice things to have. And you see, there's a little bit, there's taken, taken a bit of a bash, one of these rails in there. But sometimes you start to fiddle with these things, you, you do, do do more damage than good. So that has been there. Uh, yeah, you can see evidence of glue along the edges there. So I'll uh, get the locomotive on the bench and we'll, uh, we'll have a look at it and I'll replace or look over these wheels. So they're not too bad. Plenty of dust I might just knock off the cobwebs and so on. We don't want to, to really drag any more dirt onto the railway than absolutely necessary. I think there was glue on this one as well. I'm not quite sure. And this one's got a couple of parts of the post missing. Let's have a look on there. Yeah, you can see the, the stays on there. I dare say we could probably find another wagon to slot in there if we looked hard enough. I think we've got one sitting on the railway, but it's, it's the slightly later one. They've got different detailing on the printing. I don't know whether we can get a focus on that and some extra numbering on the sides of the tank. That's a later 70s one than, than this one. So let's pop that one back down. And then let's just have a quick look at the brake. So this is the slightly longer wheelbase. I think this would be uh, it was numbered R15 or RO15 um, into the 70s and I think these 
came with in, in their time grey roofs as well at uh, various stages for this is all pre-silver seal and uh, pre-secondary pickup on the locomotive I don't know whether we can get that one out so I think this is just at the time just before the uh, the extra pickups were added I've just left the box over there and switched everything off for now and uh, I've got the, the locomotive over here on the bench brought over the wagons we'll just uh, run a light brush over those and knock, knock off some of the dust some of them are dustier than others the locomotive seems to be dusty on one, one part and not the other so on one side and not the other so I've, I've got that connected up oh, I should probably mention that I've had a tidy up as well so uh, in, in the last few weeks this has become increasingly uh, chaotic so um, I came in here a couple of days ago and thought well I was gonna intended to play because I'd, I'd finished early for the afternoon intended to play with the, the railway and ended up spending nearly four hours tidying up I know it probably doesn't look any different but uh, there's a lot of stuff gone away and uh, I don't know that, that's not so tidy up there but uh, yeah, bits and pieces tidied up. I got rid of the um, this little piece of track I've had screwed here for ages. Um, I never did use it. A um, bit of standard track had screwed down here. So I've got the, got the rolling road here. And I had a couple of bits of Super 4 lying around here for, for a while, but I've cleaned that up uh, so I can actually use it now. And um, the magnetizer, which I've had sitting here for ages. So I've just made a, a cover to go over it because I noticed it had become very, very d dusty. So um, whilst it's a very useful tool and uh, you don't use it that often, it's not like an everyday thing, but it just picks up dust. So I'll just put that over it to keep it, uh, to keep it clean as it were. So we'll just have a quick look at the locomotive running on the, the test track there. And I'll uh, swap the camera over and get it sort of pointing down so we can um, have a look over the top of it. So I'm just gonna sit down for a moment, swap hands, let's give this a, a little power. So we're, we're running off the clipper here. So we'll, we'll give that a, a little bit of a, a go backwards and forwards. So uh, that's sort of as it came to me. I haven't oiled that or anything so I have had a look in, you can hear a bit of a squeak there. I have had a look over it just before I did that, just for trap pins and things like that, in case there's anything, anything nasty in there gonna cause it damage, but um, it's uh, very, very dry, I think. So yeah, you can hear, hear squeaks and all sorts there. Let's just go one more time back to the center. So I'm gonna Take the top off that, we'll, we'll swap the camera over to the other position so we can have a look at the, the top coming off perhaps. This isn't going to be a, a servicing type video um, and we'll, uh, we'll have a look. Let's just have a look at the magnetesion as we lift this up here. So if I lift that up, see how that picks up that rail. So there's plenty of uh, stick to the track going on there, isn't there? I forgot to mention when we were looking over the catalogue and talking about the sets, Although this, this set, the Freightmaster, came along quite early on in the 60s. And of course, this model has gone through a number of changes. It's been in several blue liveries over the years in the sets as well. I think that was represented along the way. The sets were available with blue versions of the model, but by the uh, sort of mid-early 60s, it had returned back to uh, this sort of green colour. I think this is quite a glossy one as well. So uh, we'll just swap the camera over. So I've just swapped over the tea towel because this has got these bold lines on it and I think sometimes that affects what the camera's trying to focus on, especially when you're, you're waving things around in front of it. So let's hope this uh, in, improves the situation perhaps. So we'll just have a, a quick look across the model. So I know we've seen these before. I think this is, this is quite, quite a nice version. The molding seems quite crisp on it, I think. I know they, they do say that the molding tool is becoming quite worn and maybe the detailing isn't, isn't quite as nice as it could be, but uh, that front end looks uh, looks pretty nice to me. So let's have a have a glance at the um, buffers are, are twisted. I can't remember what it was we were looking at the other week, and I looked over the video recently and noticed how twisted the buffers were, and I hadn't noticed at all in the video. But uh, there's uh, there's always something. 
you can see some silver paint, sort of quite a bit of wear here and there. So let's see if we can uh, successfully open open up the bottom of the model, not the bottom of the model, the model. So you need to uh, take the screw out. So just listen for it to, uh, there we go. I think we were, we were undone there, let's see if that'll come all the way out. Fairly long old screw. Goes right through the model up into the roof. Let's see, can we see, see any detail on that? There we go. So it's all blackened over time. So we'll pop that down. So I don't think it's the same as the one that goes through the coaches. Now it's clipped at both ends under the cab. There is a, a clip here and here um, which help hold, hold it in place and can cut down on some of the vibration. So let's see if I can get that out one handed. There we go. So there, there is the clip. It plugs in just above the cab in that, that end and above the cab in that end. They're very often broken. Once they've been in and out a few times, they can get damaged. Oops, sorry about the noise. So there's the inside. It's got a pair of weights at this end. Sometimes the, the earlier models just have the one. I don't know whether we can we can see that. So you just got uh, two weights in there. And then we've got that uh, information there. Do not unscrew. Lift and slide the spring clip to release the power bogey. So if you undo that, the top of your, your power bogey becomes undone. And then you, you can see the wind, window, the glazing strips just glued to the inside. I think that's the same for the the cab ends as well. And then you see that glued in, you see the, the glue between uh, through the uh, clear clear plastic or perspex or whatever it might be. So there's quite a bit of dust between the two surfaces. I don't think that's it's ever going to come out. And you see the clips in here. And they're just holding in this detail, detailed part on the bottom. So there is quite a bit of detail printed on there. Let's see if I can get that focused for you. So you've got Trying Railways R357. And we've got built in Britain again. I apologize for the uh, the noisy motorcycle in the background. I don't know whether you can hear that. So uh, it doesn't sound like a terribly impressive one to me. So let's have a look there so we can see. Is that brush traction England? I can never remember what it actually says there. And I'm struggling to uh, to focus on that myself. The, the camera is slightly too close to me. So it is a very, very, very tiny detail. You look at it in comparison to my thumb there. I'm going to see the, uh, the bottom plate here. So again, I'm not entirely sure whether this is the original bogey in it or whether it's a replacement. I know at some point the, uh, the plate changed and the, the screw heads became raised. Um, they, they weren't countersunk in here because these plates are very, very fragile. They're countersunk. And this is only, it's barely, it's probably not even two millimeters thick. So it's quite quite a, a fragile plate. So um, yeah, you've got to be sort of quite careful with those. And that supports the entire, sort of the, uh, the pole pieces and everything are all sort of clipped into place within the chassis. So I have noticed that, um, I have had a look in here before that there is a crack in the plastic here. So it's sustained a bit of damage. Maybe it's too much weight has been put on it and it's cracked. So I'm going to see if I can uh, take out this spring clip. And to do that, I think I need a, a slightly sharper screwdriver just to get underneath there and then pull that out. There we go. So this is quite a nice one. It's fairly blunt and it doesn't cause too much damage on the model if you slip with it. So there's that uh, spring clip just holds the whole thing in place slides into this uh, this clip not clip bolt or nut whatever you want to call it let's have a look there see if we can uh, see if i can do that so it just slides in there and stops it falling out of the out of the uh, out of the bodywork let's pop that down for a moment uh, let's just have a look at that so i don't know whether we can see there is a, a crack just running through it there so it's not too bad. I suppose we could put something in there to hold it together, but I don't think it's. Um, I'm certainly not going to give it a lot of uh, a lot of a uh, hammer, as it were. It's going to be treated quite kindly. So uh, I think maybe we'll refrain from trying to fix it unless it becomes sort of begins to spread down the model. I don't. 
I don't think we're going to give it too much uh, too much damage. So we had a, a fairly good old look over that. I think the, the buffers are separate items. So we'll pop that down so we're not going to uh, damage it. And then let's have a, a quick look over over the motor. And then I'll, I think uh, off camera I'll, I'll clean this up a bit. And then we'll have a glance at that running on the uh, perhaps the rolling road. And then uh, on the, uh, the piece of test track again, just for comparison to earlier. So the wheels are fairly dirty, and look at those uh, worms. There's no lubrication in these. In this, if there was, it's all dried away. It looks like it's been fairly um, under lubricated in the past. Sometimes they look very sticky and greasy. And the motor has done a bit of running. Uh, if we, I don't know how you can see into those brushes. They're not. Um, they have got some wear on them. But, um, it doesn't look like too much heat damage in there. Sometimes these get very hot, and this plate there distorts quite badly. I don't know whether we're getting enough light on that. So um, it's definitely some resoldering happened in these parts and at some point. So that's uh, fairly secure. So I'm just going to give that a, a bit of a clean up, but uh, let's have a look at a couple of the other parts before we, we jump to that. So let's, let's pop that down. And uh, let's have a look at one of the one of the wagons. So uh, yeah, so I'm going to take the wheels out of the wagons as well. And uh, let's see if I can just pinch this one out. So we'll give them a bit of a clean. Actually, I can't get that out. Oh, I can, but um, I'm I'm struggling to do it under the under the camera there. Let's see if we can get that. There we go. So let's. Uh, a confidence thing, applying enough pressure on there without breaking it, just to, to retrieve those. So I'll give those a clean up. So uh, a little bit of uh, fairy liquid and uh, shower cleaner, warm water. I think we'll uh, we'll let these soak for a couple of hours, and we'll get, get all of the dust off. And I can't remember which one it was. Actually, did I say that was brown? I'm not sure now whether that's brown or whether that's black. Looking at it, it's a, a fairly Really dusty. They're, they've all got uh, quite a bit of muck on them. So let's have a look at the. Actually, which one was it? Was it this one that had a, a wobbly wheel on it? I can't remember which one it was. I know we looked at them over there, and one had a, a very, very wobbly wheel. But just look at the amount of dirt on on these wheels. So I think it's definitely going to benefit from the uh, a bit of an immersion in in water to clean those like I normally do. It just takes a bit of time, so you, you need to go go through them. So let's have a look. Let's pop those down. Yeah, I think was this the one with it? Yeah, look at that. That's a, that wheel's away. Let's see if we can get that one. Yeah, I think it's um, the spokes have had it. Has it, has it snapped at some point there? Yeah, it doesn't feel very good. So I don't know whether I'm going to be able to sort of encourage that back into position enough to run it or whether we just find a spare, I think, uh, has it got a crack through it as well? Let's have a look there, but uh, yeah, we'll be able to sort that out. So there is the motor. I've, I've got that all sort of cleaned up and uh, I remagnetized it. If you have a look at the, uh, the insert pictures there, you can see that uh, I've done a little work on it. A little bit of light cleaning. Motor's in fairly nice condition. Yeah, the brushes look uh, like there's plenty left on it. I can't tell whether they're the original or not, but it doesn't seem to have run that much. But um, it was a bit um, low in magnetism. If you have a look at the, uh, the look at it on the rolling road, there are plenty of sparks coming from the wheels as well. That was before it was clean. I just gave it a quick run just to see how the, the magnet was before I did anything to it really. And it was uh, drawing quite heavily the, the better part of an amp. And then uh, if we have a look now, so I've got it on the rolling road again, and um, we'll just give it a little power and we'll, we'll see how that runs. Let me just angle this uh, around a little so we get a better view. So let's give that some power and we'll just keep an eye on the meter. So that, that's quite a change from what it was. I think it's always going to be a noisy old thing. 
and again it's sort of sitting on this board which is sort of sitting on the there's a gap there so it's a bit of vibration sitting on plywood and so on so if, I've, uh, if I can do this correctly we'll, we'll try and try and just get that on the track as well have a look at it on the test track I realize the sound might be going funny as I'm leaning to the wall here it tends to to distort in the microphone let's see if I can uh, swap these uh, these cables around so it's, uh, I might, might have left my short self short of hands here so uh, I think if we do it this way around, it'll run with the, the controller. I think we have that. Let's get that cable out of the way. And uh, we'll just give that one more uh, bit of a run. Tried it on the on the layout. So I think what what I'll do is I'll, I'll get that uh, all back together with the other part of it. Let's have a quick look over it. Let's uh, hold it in some light there. So it's all been uh, cleaned up. Lubrication, white grease on the gears. Clean the brushes and so on, and all all of the contacts. All the wheels have been cleaned. That bit of tape's just on there to remind me which way back it goes. So we'll just pop that down. And I've been over all of the uh, the wagons as well. Let me, uh, actually I need to make that go the other way. So I had a look at all of the wagons. Uh, running out of places to, to put things down. So we'll get all that back together. I'm not gonna be able to do this one-handed. I have uh, given this a, a light cleaning. Didn't want to clean this too much. Don't want to interfere with the uh, the nice glossy finish on it. Knocked the dust off, cleaned up the wheels. All the, uh, the dust and stuff out of the, the suspension detail. So we'll uh, reassemble that in a moment. Off camera, it'd be rather dull putting it back together. So I've got all of the, the wheels cleaned up on these. All the dust. So whilst I've had a bit of a, a blow at these, just with a light brush in the past, just to see what come off, I've given the axles a good o uh, going over, cleaned up the wheels, used the uh, the glass fibre pen on the, uh, where, where are we? Yeah, one of those, that's quite good on the wheels. And uh, I used, um, you know, like a washing up liquid and a shower cleaner in warm water to soak the wheels. Give them a bit of a, a soak for as long as possible. Replace the broken one. Where is the broken one? I've put the broken one away somewhere now. So I did uh, find a replacement. I've, I've uh, put that in in there somewhere. I'll never dig it out while I've, I've got a camera in my hand. Um, yeah, so they're all, they're all cleaned up. They all should run relatively smoothly now. I think one of them possibly had, I um, can't remember which one it is now, had slightly deeper flanges on than the other, but uh, it would be hard to tell whether these are the original wagons, whether there's been replacements made over the years. Or So I think when I was cleaning this, I said we'd get uh, one of these out with a drop side on it so we could see it. That sort of came away in my hand and uh, it actually does what it's supposed to do, a, a drop-sided wagon. That's a, sitting like that on the siding, ready ready for loading or against the platform, perhaps. So yeah, I thought that was all, all glued together. So it sort of cleaned up quite nicely. So I think I could probably make some uh, replacement centers for those, perhaps. So those are very, very fragile. I don't know what type of, of transfer those are. There was some minor damage to one of these, yeah. There's a post missing I discovered in there holding the coupling, but I don't think we'll get into too much trouble with that. And on the cattle wagon, I hadn't noticed, but there is a buffer. Is it the cattle buffer? No, is it the, the horse box? I can't remember now, it's that one, yeah. 
there was a buffer missing. I hadn't noticed that in the past. So it looks like it's been gone for quite some time. But uh, as I say, it wasn't sort of a restoration product. I think they're quite nice as they are, really. I could stick some centers on that. I could find some broken ones of those and repair those. But they, they sort of look quite nice as a set. So I've, um, let's just so angle this camera around a bit. Um, I've got the uh, the J83 over there and uh, we've got it with a, a rake of goods in the goods shed. I don't know whether we can see that far over. I already opened the point so we'll bring that round so we can get it partially in position. So if I give that some power, I've got, I've got the handheld here. But um, I don't, don't know how much I've got. I keep meaning to get an extension for that so I can get a little further across. So let's uh, let's give that some power. And we'll bring it around so we, I'm aiming to try and get the the freight master set in there into the good shed. I know somebody commented when I when I showed the good shed that I'd missed a trick and I could have used that to demonstrate it, but I hadn't really had the time to do the work on it. There she is, coming around nice and smoothly. I think that container might be one from, from a starter set. It, it came with a bunch of other things. So I think that same type of container would have been in the Freightmaster set, but with the, the Triang um, stickers on the side. Let me just stop that there, because I think point number eight needs to be changed there. So I'll swap sides on the railway. We've got the little goods train just sitting there that we were bringing around the railway. We'll just need to switch the points in a second and then we'll pop that into the sidings there which leaves us the whole layout to uh, have a charge around with the Freightmaster. So let's have a quick glance at the Freightmaster set all sitting on the rails there. So we'll, we'll come back to that in a moment. So we just need to flip 8R so we can pass through it. Let's grab the controls and then we'll, we'll give that a little power. We'll roll that forward. Yeah, I suspect we're not gonna get this fineness of control with the uh, with the Freightmaster set, that uh, diesel locomotive is going to be a different sort of a proposition in the running department. I think definitely going to be a little noisier, as we mentioned when we saw it running on the bench. So I think I left the points on the long sidings um, are all correct. I'm just going to have a, a glance. I know I was checking wagons running through those when I was cleaning the wheels and reassembling them, but uh, I think that's all good. So let's uh, run this back. Sounds lovely on the rails. Let's see if we can come back. We haven't got a lot of room to play with before we run into the, uh, the other wagons here. So let's just keep an eye on that guards van going up to the silo wagons. I think that's probably it. I don't think I'm going to be running anything else in there, not, not today anyway, so we'll just switch up those points for now. So we'll just track back around. So that's 8R. I'll put that down. I've got them all in a mess now. So there we go. I was just trying to move that too quickly from these um, these type of points which aren't best suited to the uh, capacitor just charge unit. You need to be uh, sort of thoughtful about how you move the levers. So we want to just flip this so we've got both lines energized from the same side of the controller. Other controllers set for the turntable at the moment. So there is the Freightmaster. Oh, and I, there were some items in there I said we were going to look at, so I've kept that out. 
we'll have a glance at those in a minute. So let's see if we can get to this underway. So this is just having a run around the inside to start with. Yeah, different sort of technology at play here. Is uh, bouncing around in there a little bit, sort of uh, moving backwards and forwards. They never do sit that level. That's causing some of that sort of chatter that we're hearing in there. So let's uh, open up some points and get her onto the outside line. So we need two uh, B and one B. There we go. So the it's a quite a willing model. It definitely wants to go. I don't think it's a going to be terribly good on the low speed. Remember, no extra pickups on the on this one. It's just the pickups on the power bogey. So let's give that a little power now. how she'll do with the, uh, the diamond crossing. Let's see if we can get a more elevated view as she comes up to the diamond. Sailed straight over it, I'm quite surprised there. Now I think I left the point open into the good shed. somebody did mention to me that you're not supposed to put the locomotives through the good shed but this being toy train set we're uh, we're not going to observe those rules today so I'm just going to roll that through now hopefully the good sheds in the position where anything coming through it's not really going to collide with it so let's actually let's flip the camera around and see if I can come in a bit tighter there so we'll give that a little power It. So I think we'll uh, we'll back that out now. Hopefully everything will behave on the way out. So let's see if we can uh, get that coming back through. So a little bit of a jump into life. I suppose over the last few weeks we have become quite uh, spoilt by the, uh, the slightly, slightly later models, some of them very, very smooth running. So let's uh, close that and then we'll open up the elevated section. So let's start 1G and 3G. So we'll be able to run up and over and bring it uh, Bring it back onto the inside. Actually, no, back onto the outside. Let's come come round back onto the outside. So let's let's give this some power. I think we'll go wider. I just realised we've got the camera setting relatively tight there. So let's uh, let's get her underway. She's a little quieter once she's insulated from the baseboard there. I think uh, she's not really going to struggle with those wagons at all with that uh, magnetesion 
on the motorboat, we, I don't think we've got to, got any trouble there. Let's see that pull away on the slope. Let's get the whole, uh, whole train in shot, shall we? Over the bridge. I'm quite surprised at how smooth this is over the point works. I was expecting a lot more stuttering. Relatively controlled down the slope here. Back through the point work. Let's have some express freight speed down the straight here. reasonably careful with it. I don't want to throw those wagons off. Let's see how fast she'll climb. There we go, we'll calm that down now I think. I think we'll just bring that down on a level ground. We'll slow it right down. Actually, we want to take it away from that curve so I can get the catalogue out and we'll have a, a quick glance at that. So let me think about this for a moment. Actually, no, let's bring that back again. it onto the uh, this line here and we'll park it up there so we want one R and I think everything is set everything else is set so away we go let's just get this off the off the main line It's relatively responsive, noisy as we expected, but uh, what I'm really, really, really surprised by is the uh, the performance over the point work. Very, very good. Be excellent to get this onto some Super Four. So let's leave that there. I hope you enjoyed seeing that. Uh, the freight must have charge around a bit there. So I don't think that Class 37 ever did benefit from uh, the uh, newer style Ringfield motors, like uh, some of these other other locomotives. I think uh, when by the time they were putting these into the, the Class 37 and so on. Um, and the, the newer models, the, the Class 29 and the Class 25 that came along in the 70s with the beautiful smooth running motors. Um, I think uh, the, the mold was considered to be a bit out of date and possibly worn out by that time. So um, yeah, these, um, these locomotives had a very, very long run from the early 60s into the late 70s, I think and they always retain this motor bogey. So great looking model, the, uh, the Class 31. Really uh, lovely looking motor, locomotive in its various liveries over the years. So uh, let's just have a quick glance at what I was, um, had caught my eye when I was looking through this catalog when I was setting up the video. So obviously I've looked through these catalogs a number of times and the nice thing about looking through old catalogs is that you always come across things you, you hadn't noticed before or, or knew about but didn't didn't know about if you know what I mean so uh, I'm uh, looking there at you know you've got that sidewall clip there so I knew about those but I hadn't spotted it in in this catalog before so that that clip is for the catenary and it, it clips onto uh, the old gray sidewalls for the uh, for the series 3 track but um, I don't I don't know whether you um, 
would have used that in any way with the, with the Super 4. I do have a, a bunch of those with, to use with the, uh, with the, with the Series 3 and the grey the sidewalls. But let's just uh, leaf through there. It's not necessary with these sidewalls because they've got the, the clip built in for the catenary on, on every section. So um, what it was was in the, uh, the motorway range, the Minic motorway range. There are some really uh, amazing looking items. I know we've seen pictures of these before. I don't have any of these these items. It's um, sort of a, a bad habit too far. I've been offered this stuff on a, on a number of occasions. So there's that price list I was, I was talking about earlier. So uh, it's a very, very thin piece of paper or see-through. Um, it sort of has a, it's sort of almost very reminiscent of a, of a toilet paper which was available in the UK for, uh, back in the, the 70s, I remember, called, um, or I, be, I better not name the name of it perhaps, um, but many of you will probably understand which, which particular brand that was. So this is dated um, 1963, so we said this was um, in the catalogue, this is a 64 catalogue, but there's some uh, great looking items in there. Let's just have a have a look down the, the prices. Perhaps this could be of interest to anybody who's uh, interested in these items. So some of these items might not have prices on looking down there. Pricing down the one side and perhaps not down the other. Or does it just say private vehicle set including each? Oh yeah, there we've got prices. There's big descriptions of um, sets and things down that left hand side. Some quite uh, impressive looking prices there, aren't there? When we look at those, 113 and 6. So, what was that? A racing car set. That's a, a reassuring price. And a railway and motorway accessories so that you can combine the two ranges together, which was the, the beauty of this system. Although I'm not entirely sure they're both the same scale, I think there are slight differences, are, but they, they do look very good together. I've seen plenty of pictures on the internet now, or well, not pictures, a, a video. Let's just have a, a glance down that side there. You've got sections, pavement sections, junction sections. It's a very, very complicated set of items for the range, I think. So uh, let's pop that down and excuse my references to toilet paper. It was these items here. I, I've never, I'm, having looked through here, they, they haven't really caught my eye, but that, uh, Car water ferry loading key available later. It says here, and it looks how, look how you could use it. And it's got got two of them, I think. And there it says, um, what is it? Car water ferry set. Um, so it consists of water ferry loading key and one plastic C. That's a great phrase, isn't it? Plastic C. And some other items. I thought that, that caught my eye. I thought that was a lovely, a lovely thing. It just says available later. So I'm not sure, because I, I don't have any real knowledge of this range. Oh, that's a beautiful item too, isn't it? Um, there's a, a ferry, it's uh, great stuff. And that car transporter there, that looks uh, available, also available later. So it just says new there. So uh, I wonder when they were. There's some other items over here available later. So very often it says available spring or late summer in, in the in the catalogue. But I suppose we should just have a look at some of these other items whilst we're here. And that is just an amazing page of components. I think that's uh, really quite nice. So uh, I think uh, the, the layouts or the, the tracks that could be made, the circuits would be sort of quite comprehensive. So these lovely items. I think these lamp posts were included in the um, the um, turntable set in the early 70s. The grey one, like I used to used to have on the on the railway over there a little while ago. I think there are there are two lamp posts. I don't think I ever got the lamp posts on when we had it on here, but I had it on the other railway. And some of the great items here. Let's have racing pits, these fencing and sets of flags. Different, different countries represented. And they really are quite wonderful things. I mean, this is just something else, isn't it? Again, this is available later. I'd love to know whether these things 
made it into production. I haven't done any research. I'm going to have a, a look and see. But uh, I think that's probably it again. <laughs>